Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. My name is Dan. I'm here on the island of Bohol in the Philippines. I'm in my inside studio today and I'm talking about knives and things like that. Today I wanted to show you some different things. Um, I got a bunch of different sword-like knives. Um, this one my brother sent me. It's a nice big thick leather sheath and it's, it's nothing fancy. <laughs> it's actually it's a piece of piece of garbage probably by most standards, but it's cool to us. It'd be a, a good defense weapon. I've been watching a, a channel that the guy has all kinds of swords and these fancy knives and he he cuts up double water bottles at the same time that all this stuff really really cool his name is Carl I want to say Carl Redger R-U-E-D-G-E-R -E -E if I'm saying that wrong Carl I'm sorry this is just kind of like a miniature shout out to him. I'll put a link into his channel for him. He has some wonderful videos on uh, knives and swords and all kinds of different stuff. Very, 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 very interesting. Uh, real nice guy. Uh, very knowledgeable, but has a beautiful collection of things. And I'm sure he hasn't even showed half his collection, but he just, he just has some wonderful stuff. Um, this knife here, I kind of like a uh, sword, I guess you'd call it. Um, I've had to grind the blade down a few times because it gets rusty real bad here. Um, I want to, it's actually quite heavy. I, I kind of want to uh, sharpen it up to a razor. I don't think it's, no, it's nowhere near that sharp. I like to sharpen it up to a razor and try a couple of the, the bottle chops that he does, things like that. Um, he does most of his double, double bottle chops with a more like knives uh, style, thing, style thing, you know, stuff up to 12, 13 inch blades. Uh, but very, it's very cool. Looks like a very cool little hobby. Plus, he's got a bunch of buddies that are into the same things, so it's pretty neat. But this one is a uh, has kind of a a brass. I don't know what you call that, the pommel thing or whatever, the guard. Nice wood handle, then a thing on the end, brass. It's got a little bit of corrosion on it. But it's real, real solid and heavy. For what it is again i keep these uh close at hand so if we ever need to to grab one they're there you know for that use and the, the sheath was actually quite nice on it my brother sent me a lot of fantasy knives too um like movie movie type props with he sent me one that has it's round with three folding blades he sent me another one that was kind of like a it was kind of like about a maybe a two foot sword with big fancy guards on it um, but I think it's going to be four or five knives all together they're, they're pretty neat um, this one here this is all, all beat up and everything you can see the the sheath is, needs a new wrap on it and stuff like that um, I bought this back in Iowa and it's got some big rust on here I need to, need to grind it all down again it's the first time I've touched it in several months um, I bought this, it has a, well, at least a two foot blade on it, has the, what do you call it, katana end on it, that's, I don't know if that's the right way to say that, but, but I bought it because it was full tang going all the way down the end, and I thought that this would make, if I cut it down to about here, this would make an awesome kind of a bolo knife here in the Philippines because um, it's nice and thick and heavy and I just thought that maybe cutting it off about here would be pretty decent um, this this thing here is in the way to me anyway for if you're gonna use it for bushcraft or anything like that you need to get your hand up there but I like the I like the handle was big enough to put two hands on it so you could use it for for mega chopping and stuff like that um, but I've never messed with it. I just, I've just kept it the way it is for now. It says on the side here. It says 
K-I-S-T-A-N. Doesn't say Pakistan, just says K-I-S-T-A-N. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I got it in a, I got it in a pawn shop in Iowa for like ten bucks. I just laughed, and I, the guy the guy gave it to me for what I wanted to pay for it. So I I took it, put it in my suitcase, and brought it here. And uh, I just I just thought it was cool. This looks neat. I don't know. <laughs> you can take it or leave it. But it's 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 kind of a stainless steel, no flux in the blade at all. But it does rust like crazy. So, but it's always been a basically a silver blade. Uh, now, Carl did a video the other day. Of it was like a a tag video or something like that. And some of his knife buddies were talking about their most deadly knives, their most devastating knives. And for me, this knife here, when I first got it, had the, the what do you want to call it, like ribbon wrap on it that was crisscrossed, and that got all torn off years and years ago. I bought this knife in uh, 1993 on the island of Cebu in a knife shop on a road called Talisai. And, yeah, look at this. This is just covered with rust, too. Now, this one here got a banana, got a banana patina. Maybe if I rub it down with if I rub it down with some oil, maybe this rust will come off. I don't know. This was an interesting knife, though. I bought it at the time because some people were murdered right near our house where we're living in the mountains in the Philippines, and the guy was a foreigner from India, and they just sold a bunch of cattle, and people came to get the money, and they already put the money in the bank, and they killed the husband, the wife, and the two kids, chopped them all up. So I went out looking for a knife, and this was the first knife that I found that looked decent. This is supposed to be made out of a um, axle from a World War II Jeep, from an American World War II Jeep, and it has a, a, a brass hand guard on it. It has leather stacked washer handles with a couple pieces of aluminum in the middle of it, and then a nice brass type end on it. What I like about it is though, it's about, it's not quite two foot long blade, but in the ballpark, it's pretty long. Let me get my tape measure out. It has a 18, 18 and a half inch blade on it and a six and a half inch handle um, fits my hand very well it's nice and big in the middle so you have a very secure grip on it but what I like about this knife is that it's fairly it's a fairly thin stock has a little bit of play but very little on bend in it but it has a very very razor sharp edge the whole length a very nice point and then a razor sharp edge on the back all the way to here and I use this knife here in the Philippines. I, I haven't used it for a couple years, but this is my this is my pig knife. And I try to show the locals when they when they kill a pig, they tie it up and then they cut its throat and, and just make the poor pig just suffer and suffer and suffer. And uh, I showed them how to tie the pig up, and then I come in through the the ribs and pierce its heart, and then slice its throat. And it, it kills the pig, but it bleeds out very nicely. And uh, the pig isn't all wound up for 25 or 30 minutes screaming and pumping all the meat full of adrenaline and ruining it. But this is my most this is my most deadly knife, if you ask me. Um, the beauty of this knife here is I, I don't know any of those fancy moves that Carl knows, you know, spinning the knife around. But this is this is nice because. It's very light, and you could make some pretty good, pretty good cuts with this if you had to, and stab if you needed to. It's long enough to to give you a little bit of distance. And again, I would never do do that unless I had to, of course. But let's see how much does this one weigh. This one weighs 
This one weighs 500 grams. And the big sword weighs, wow, this big sword weighs, weighs, weighs 1,000, 1,100, weighs 1,150 grams. So over a kilo, it does feel pretty heavy. A lot of the weight on this one is in the handle. But I just thought I'd show you that stuff. And main reason I brought them out is I wanted to bring them down into the shop and I was going to clean them up anyway. So I'm going to get out my grinder and sander to, to sand up the big blades. And this one here I'll oil down maybe with some real light, real fine sandpaper. I'll sand it with some oil. Try to get it back to the banana patina again. But that's all I have. I just wanted to, again, mention Carl Redger, if that's correct. And uh, his channel is very, very nice. Again, I'll leave a link for you guys. Go so check them out. Pretty interesting stuff. Just watching them cut up bottles is just cool. And uh, what I thought was really cool was the last the last video I watched where he was doing it, he had a knife similar to this. It had a, had a curved blade, and it was a CRKT, which is a company I, I detest. I can't stand CRKT. I've been burned by him three times now on different knives. But he had a, a special blade that they had. It was I think it was thir a 13-inch blade with a beautiful handle, and it had a, a curve on it, kind of like something you'd see in the Middle East, you know, back in the old movies type thing. And he put it up next to a, a water bottle and go, go like that, and it would just slice right through a water bottle. Unbelievably sharp. And uh, he said it was two, over $280, around $280, $285, something like that. I don't have any knives in that ballpark, so I don't have four knives in that ballpark. Uh, but go check, his, go check his channel out, and uh, you'll, you'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy it a lot. So uh, thanks for entertaining me, Carl. I really enjoyed it. Take care. So everybody... Get outside, have some fun, and be safe. See you later.